Hello, welcome to uh, Let's Try. I'm very excited about this game. We're gonna get into it. I'll, I'll maybe teach you a little bit about how to play it uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about why I enjoy it. So this is not a blind let's try, but uh, this game is coming out today. So I've already started the game. I've already kind of gotten through some of the tutorial. I've even completed a couple of missions. This is um, this is a ship. I mean, it's kind of chonky now, but uh, it, at a certain point it started as one of the basic ships that you got. This game incorporates mechanics from a lot of my favorite games. It's basically a kind of modular or a Lego-ish uh, based ship builder with a space sandbox. When I heard about this game, I was cautiously optimistic of, well, that looks really cool um, and it should be a fun little like sandbox-ish game like where you just build ships and smash them against other ships. And so far that has been true, but there's a lot of other things going on in this game that I really help flesh it out as being more of a space sim. So anyway, here's our ship. It's, you know, comprised of, the, the crew are, are a very important part. You could say that there's a little bit of rim world in this game and how the crew interact with your ship. They're going to basically carry most of the important supplies to the parts that need them. And this includes things like the engines. It includes things like batteries that, you know, for, for the sake of um, allocating power. And it also includes your, your weaponry. It's, it's just your crew. Your crew does everything. And so you're gonna want a lot of crew and you're also gonna to want to set up your ship in such a way that the distance between um, crucial parts are, are efficient. We can hover over a part and we can see um, those green lines mean they're good. That means that the distance between the parts that are relevant to that component are efficiently spaced. Meaning, um, so right now we can see that the distance between it and a crew co uh, compartment is efficiently spaced and the distance between uh, the power capacitor and this engine is also efficiently spaced. This is all pretty advanced stuff, but um, it gives you an idea of what kind of game this is. This is a game that is going to feel very accessible in it and how you build your ships. You may be a little bit surprised to find that there is a bit of depth to this game. So we're gonna I'm gonna unpause and then we're gonna go into um, ship flight mode and we'll see what that looks like and we're gonna take a mission so I'm gonna take uh, hail this station and I first of all I, I just love a lot of the little touches of detail and and juice in this game I, I really appreciate this kind of like hailing interface there's a lot of options to um, spruce things up uh, to scale the UI so I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a game I might even be able to play on the Steam Deck so I'm gonna take a very simple bounty this is a bounty. There are other missions, but uh, so far I've just been doing the bounties. It is, of course, like it, there is a lot of ship combat. You can also do things like mining. You could even kind of get into trading, although I don't know how much depth there is in that. All right, so now that I've taken a mission. Ah, okay, so this is the range. So we know that the ship that I need to destroy is in this little corral here. Uh, that means it could be anywhere in here, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of exploration. Um, I have upgraded our ship's engines um, meaning I've just slapped a couple more on so we should have a pretty good speed. I also want to uh, add just now I love the music in this game. It incorporates a little bit of classic Star Trek uh, theremin. It's got a bit of action. It just it just sounds good and it changes also depending on what's happening so when you get into combat it, it gets a bit more hectic. There's our fugitive contact. We don't know what they look like yet because they're not in our I should mention this is our kind of our field of view. That's the range of how far we can see. Anything that kind of enters this bubble is something we can actually look at. Things like asteroids for mining, things like stations, and also things like ships. So we don't actually know what this guy has, what he does, and what he uh, is capable of until he enters that bubble. So I'm gonna unpause. You do a lot of pausing in this game. I, I like to do that to, to ch kind of micromanage a little bit. We can have a look at what this guy has, and he has absolutely nothing this guy is is basically a little tiny pod so we're gonna we're gonna attack him and once we're close enough um i can actually start to ta target specific things about this ship things uh first of all I, I like to just go ahead and target weapons just to disable them right away in this case they're they've got a disruptor the disruptor is like the best thing they've got going for them fires bolts of electrical energy that deal little damage but can short circuit enemy systems causing them to lose power can penetrate shields while draining them so 
so basically this is meant to disable us. So we want to get rid of that as soon as possible. So we have targeted it. Wow, we've blasted maybe way too quickly into them. You can get a little bit specific about how quickly you're flying, but that's okay. So now that we've disabled that, we can go ahead and hit this little minor defense point, and then uh, we can go straight for the reactor. Boom. Um, we, we, we leveled up our fame a little bit. And uh, I love, you know, that's the first time I've hit the reactor directly. So we get this really satisfying explosion. And you are actually kind of seeing like the oxygen escape and, and fun stuff. And you'll, you may even see like crew members get blown out into space. Yeah, there's one. There's one right now. Feel bad for you, bud. I, I know there's a little bit of drag on stuff and I appreciate that there's drag, even though it doesn't make sense because it would mean that, you know, we'd have to chase this stuff down forever. First of all, we took a little bit of damage. So we're gonna go to wanna repair that. We can repair all of that. That's gonna take steel and coils. Steel and coils are things that we're gonna want a lot of. We use it to uh, repair our ship. We also use it to upgrade our ship and we also can sell stuff like that. So you might have noticed that those are things that are kind of splayed about from our uh, victory over the pirate. So what we can do is we can claim all of this stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mine it, but basically it just means salvage. Um, this is the catch all button for gather materials. And uh, we're gonna be treated to our crew members go uh, on an EVA mission and gather the supplies. I can speed up time a little bit because we're not in really any danger right now. And uh, go and gather all that. We can see it all stored in our um, storage base. If we don't have enough storage base, we just straight up cannot carry any more of that supplies. I've caught, I've been caught a couple of times off guard with, well, you, you're out of storage space. And that's something I really, really love about this game is um, something that is generally static in a lot of other space sim sandbox, like um, upgrade our storage base so we have more space. Is something we have a lot more kind of granular control over. We can, we can build and upgrade our ship in exactly the way that we want. We don't have to go and buy a new ship. It, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not really limited by, um, you know, anything other than our imagination. And that's really going to set Cosmoteer apart from a lot of other space sims. For me, personally speaking, I think that this is a great foundation. Um, this is, a, they've already added a bit of mod support. I, I saw when I launched it that there there are mods, there is mod support, but this is the kind of game I'm really going to want to see a lot of extra like crazy depth to. I, I would love to see oxygen control. I would love to see like even more kind of energy control. Maybe we can like get, get in there with like um, plugging in wires and stuff. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I'm just really excited for something like this because this is a concept of a game that I've been waiting for for a long time. I've been hoping that someone would do exactly this kind of game. And it is very well executed. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Now that we've completed our bounty, we're gonna head back to the station and hand it in. We can also sell some of the extra parts that we got from this destroying that. I like to keep them for the sake of upgrading our ship. While we're flying, we can actually do a little bit of upgrading. I, I think that if you're gonna upgrade your ship, you probably want to go into blueprint mode because I found that actually directly editing our ship is a little bit finicky because it won't let you move crew quarters it'll tell you no you can't do that because you need those so directly editing your ship is a little bit finicky but blueprint mode is exactly what you're gonna want once we get back to the station I'm gonna I'm gonna hand in our, our mission and maybe we can take something a little bit spicier I have actually taken a extra mission that requires us to destroy a few pirate ships and it might even be that we have to fight more than one at once. I have upgraded our ship a couple times, so we could be, you know, ready for something like that. I should also talk a little bit about uh, the limitations to shipbuilding, there, because there are some. There is a very basic limitation. What is this? Maybe we could take this one first. So the limitations to shipbuilding: you have a certain amount of command points. Everything in uh, everything that you build of any value at all has command points. Your command points are given to you by c the cockpit, and you can build better cockpits. You can also, I think you can just build more than one cockpit. Uh, that's gonna take up a crew member, of course, and it, they also require power. So you gotta keep those things in mind. This guy is making his way over to us. So we, we're gonna have to defend ourselves. Something I do appreciate about um, the camera at work is you can have the camera hovering over two, two ships at once. I kind of like to just move around. Um, I, I don't tend to want to see both ships at once, but I, I just appreciate that that option is there. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the other weapon. 
we made contact with them and there's the other weapon done and now we can just hit the that's the cockpit if you destroy either the cockpit or the reactor that's that's the ship disabled Ooh. He flew away a little bit. That's fine. We'll, we'll go and collect that. Another thing I really appreciate is there's a the option of setting down waypoints, and the game doesn't actually automatically do that. Little little touch that I really appreciate. Like if you find a really nice asteroid for mining, or say you blow up a ship, and uh, you you don't have the space to salvage all of it, throw down a waypoint, and and that lets you know, hey. Um, there's still some more salvage here to grab. I really, I don't know what it is. I love the, the little astroneer in in space is, is, I don't know, it's really funny to me. I know it's like tragic. We can see our, our storage is starting to fill up. What we could do is upgrade our ship a little bit. And you know, like there's nothing saying that anything has to be permanent, right? You could just upgrade your ship, kind of a temporary, like, yeah, this is until, you know, we, We've delivered these goods and you know, we're, we're, we're done with that. So we could we could throw this storage down here. And since they're already traveling that distance, you can they can walk through storage. I don't think that this actually inhibits them in any way. We're gonna wanna make sure that there's doors there and there so that they can you know, get through there. But now there's tons of more storage available. We can maybe uh, see how that's gonna reflect on our weight. All right, let's, we, we've got another dude here we've got to take care of and I could just like l let them go but they're probably gonna harass us so I don't necessarily Ooh, this guy okay it's an interesting looking ship auto save coming in with the clutch we've got a really nice I love the the, the feeling of the weapons they like the, the the sense of impact on those weaponry uh, on those blasts is is just really satisfying and you can get really creative with um how the the ships are built you can see like this guy his weapons were were pretty protected by those little kind of arms of of armor i'm gonna set a waypoint down salvage so we're gonna go to the station we're gonna try and defend it from some pirates let's see what how that goes so we got our station getting um harassed let's let's see if we can't help them out these guys are don't seem like a big problem what we could do actually just for fun is we could target their engines and that will um stop them from being able to turn okay um he's in kind of an unreachable spot so why don't we switch targets for a minute here he might be able to recover a little bit but that's okay okay we can finish this guy off and then we'll come back to the other one all right, he's done, and I'm gonna throw down a waypoint. Maybe in the future I wouldn't mind having like hotkeys, almost like Vintage Story, where you can just kind of set down an icon and not necessarily worry about what to call it. Well, I didn't want to hit the uh, reactor necessarily because it, it does kind of blow the ship apart, but that's okay. What we could do here is we're gonna hail the station. They've got a bunch of missions as well. In fact, we can hand in this one here. So we got a bunch of credits and fame. Fame is an interesting mechanic that interacts with how you buy crew. Those crew are going to want to join our ship based on our fame. So you can see there's really nice crews over here available to us based on our fame, but if we have more fame, they'll actually be cheaper. So you can kind of like hold out a little bit and, and cr grow your fame so that buying crew is, is less expensive and in fact I think I will do that but what I am going to do first of all we're going to repair our ship and then secondly we're going to there's a lot of interesting stuff here Hyperium I haven't really seen or experimented with and what I'll do is I'll maybe sell our stuff while we collect it uh mysterious crystals capable of bending space I'm used for to fuel hyper jumps not something I've really dealt with we could like right now uh the only thing you can I, I seem to be able to trade are things that I'm going to need components I'm going to need for either building or uh, supplying a certain component and I'm gonna be less likely to want to use those. I almost wish that there was like a trade, like basic trade of like, okay, you know, rice or food, you know, uh, something that you don't mind storing for the sake of selling. So I don't know if there's much of a deep trading system just yet. We can also buy blueprints and this is something you're definitely going to want to, to do. Ion beam emitter, shoots a powerful beam of ion energy in a fixed direction, damage is lower at no longer range, can be shot into an ion beam prism to redirect its angle. Interesting. Cannon fires single rounds of projectile ammunition that can penetrate into enemy ships, sometimes starting fires. 
that's cool. So missile launchers, these are gonna require missiles. So you're gonna have to supply those and uh, that's gonna require you to kind of like manage your storage, uh, like distance to your weapons. Not something I necessarily want to do just yet. Oh, we could do a shield generator. That sounds kind of fun. Let's do that. All right, let's um let's buy this hyperdrive. I'm interested in that. So those are some of the things you, you can, um like you have to buy the blueprints in order to start equipping your ship with it. So I'm gonna go into blueprint mode. I find that this is just an easier way of doing things. So I'm gonna grab all of this stuff. I find the best way to do this is actually just to cut and that, that makes it easier to move. I'm gonna move this back and then that way we can um, chunk in our hyperdrive. And then just for now, we can fill the gaps with corridor. We can also double check, um, do we have enough power? It's suggesting that we have uh, 1.8 power. So actually maybe our power is, you know, we're, we're starting to see the limitations of our power. So we could like move that over there and then um, have another reactor. But now I've I've uh, I've increased the distance between our power and our, our capacitor and, and even to our crew. So maybe that's not as good. And control Z is actually gonna do the trick for things like that. We're good on that front. Are the, is this, this seems happy, this is happy of course. Um, so now we are well above our power. We seem to have all of the resources we need. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a we have a dude here and what we want to do is actually recall our crew, stop them from what they're doing. And we can see in the top right corner how our ship is doing. In fact, we can we can make this a bit bigger. And it almost goes like full FTL mode um, where we can see how things are going. I like this guy's ship design. He's gone for like this like diagonal look. I don't seem to be hitting uh, these disruptors, which is a problem. Oh, oh he destroyed our, our big cannon. Um, that's a big problem. He's currently uh, hitting our cockpit. I need to I need to do something about that. I might have to bail on this. So what we're gonna do is actually hide behind this station and hope that the station does a little bit of damage. So he did get destroyed. That's fantastic. Let's uh, repair our ship. Everyone's out of EVA, which is great. So let's go back to um, salvage mode. Just realized I didn't put the hyperdrive in. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the hyperdrive in. Right there should be fine. I'd like to see what just a hyperdrive jump looks like. I've often said I judge a space sim by how interesting its hyperdrive animation is. Uh, maybe we can buy some Hyperium. Yeah, we can. I haven't even looked at our galactic map, so it looks like we also have factions. And I have seen that those factions will will grow, um, but we can possibly could plot a hyper jump to one of these other stations. Okay, so that's how much it costs. Looks like it only costs two. So when you buy something, it doesn't just show up in your ship. It actually has to go and collect it. And in fact, I think these are um, crew mates or robots um, part of the station that are delivering that Hyperium. So I wouldn't mind trying to plot a course here. Is this the button hyper jump? I, I kind of just want to see what that looks like. So let's see what that looks like. We can see um, both the animation on on the ship as well as uh, how it comes in. There it is. That's that's really cool. That's really cool. I like that a lot. All right. Um, that's gonna do it for Cosmo Tier. I think that this game's got a lot of uh, a lot of depth and it's fun depth. You know, it's the kind of depth that makes you kind of inspires you to to really get into being creative with uh, your your designs with with your ship designs as well as like kind of wanting to optimize things i'm not the kind of person who likes to optimize things i don't like to necessarily have to finick with um, how efficient a thing is but this this game actually really does make me want to um, sit down and, and figure out some of the math on it. I, I probably still won't, to be honest. If you enjoyed this, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And definitely let me know in the comments if this is the kind of game that you enjoy. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.